Hello and welcome to my channel. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of scraps and I needed a better way to organize them. So this is the system that I've come up with. I have ever all my scraps in a binder here and I've got a large store-bought envelope that I use for the larger pieces, but smaller pieces of scraps tend to get lost in here and I tend not to use them. So I felt like I wanted a smaller envelope and I decided that I would just make one. So here's how I'll make um, an acetate envelope pouch with a snap button closure. So I'm working from Hunky Dory Heavyweight Acetate and you definitely want the heavyweight stuff because it's nice and thick. And um, this sheet happens to be A4 in size. So you may need to adopt these measurements if you're using a US letter size um, sheet of acetate. My first score line is at four and a half. I like to um, just do a lot of uh, light score lines because this is heavyweight and um, I, and it's slippery, so I tend to slip if I'm trying to put too much pressure while scoring. And then I'll just go in with a ball stylus tool so that I can really get into that um, uh, score line or the groove of the scoreboard. My second score line was at nine and three quarters of an inch. So uh, that leaves me with a two inch flap on one end. And I'm going to round the corners because those um, sharp edges or corners can be rather pointy. So I'll go ahead and round those off. And then what I'll do is actually set some plastic snaps as my closure. It's easier to do that while um, everything is still open and you haven't closed up your envelope yet. However, I find that um, I, at least for the first one before I knew the measurements, I definitely folded everything up first. So I'm going to go ahead and fold on the two score lines and I'm paying attention to that bottom line there to make sure that everything lines up nice and neat along the sides of our envelope. And then I'll fold down the flap too. So once you have your, um, you know, front and your top flaps folded, then you'll be able to see how much of an overlap there is between those two, because that's where our snap components are going to be inserted. And you want to make sure in terms of placement that there's ample sort of acetate surrounding the uh, snap button. That way, um, as you open and close this, um, it doesn't tear through your acetate. That's the other reason to use heavyweight acetate since it's nice and strong. It'll be durable and hold up to um, sort of all of that stress of the snap button. So you could, um, I just marked a um, the center of my flap. And for me, that was 10 and a half centimeters in. And then I marked one and a half centimeters um, up from the bottom of the flap. This is the set of uh, snaps and pliers that I have. It's from, um, I bought it on Amazon. The brand is Linda with a Y. And it comes with the pliers, as you see here. And the unique thing about this set, which is larger, they do have a smaller set, is that it actually has the adapter components for affixing metal snaps, which are completely different than um, plastic snaps. You can't use the same um, adapter pieces to snap or, or to set both. It also has adapter pieces for um, setting grommets too. So for one tool, it serves multiple purposes. And uh, for not that much more money, I thought it was nice to have all of those options. Most sets that you find um, should have the snap components for T3, T5, and T8. Those are just different size buttons. So here's um, how snaps work. There's going to be four individual pieces. Two of them will be the same. The two that are the same are sort of your posts. They'll have like a pointy end and it almost looks like a little thumbtack. Then you'll have this piece here, which is a socket. It has sort of a protrusion coming out and you'll set that inside the post with your material sandwiched in between. On the receiving end of the socket or of the stud is your socket. So the socket has a little well 
in the center. And that well is what will receive the protrusion from the stud. So that's how um, the closure will work. And similar to um, the stud components, you'll just place the um, socket into the post with your material in between. So um, those are the pieces of the button snap and how to set it is where I've already um, made my marking. I'm going to take an awl, you could use a pointy tool, um, anything sharp, and I'm just going to pierce a hole right through there. You're not going to see that sharpie mark because the button will cover that. So I'm going to take um, my stud piece here. That's going to go on my flap. I'll take the post and poke it through the hole. And you want the pretty kind of smooth, glossy side out so that um, that's the pretty side that will be visible. And then we're going to I'm going to set the uh, stud piece inside there. You should be able to press down a little bit and it'll um, it will kind of stay in there for you, which will make it a little bit easier to um, get this whole piece settled within the pliers. You want to make sure that you're using the correct settings to match whatever size button you are using. Th this um, tool set comes with T5 size buttons and the adapter pieces that are already installed in the pliers are set for T5. So everything's ready to go outside the um, out of the gates. But if you ever buy different size buttons, you'll want to make sure that you uh, change out the adapter settings or if you want to set the metal snaps. You just want to make sure that the pretty side is down on the base and um, that's going to sit, it'll, the base is almost like a cradle that will um, sort of let you sit that uh, button inside there and just squeeze gently. Um, I'll do that again with the socket side. So I just made my marking. And the one thing to um, kind of take into consideration is that I'm anticipating this to stay relatively flat. So I just set my um, mark to be exactly the same as what I did on my flap. It's going to be um, one um, or 10 and a half centimeters in from the side and one and a half centimeters down from the top. You may want to, instead of um, making your markings the way I did, you may want to, before you set the snap on your flap, you might want to um, just take a Sharpie through the hole that you made in your flap and mark on the front of the envelope where um, the socket should get installed. So if you're anticipating, for example, a lot of bulk in this envelope, then you might need to actually set the socket to be a little bit closer to the top edge of that front flap um, in order to accommodate the bulk that you anticipate. Um, since I'm not putting a gusset or anything into this envelope, I think it'll stay relatively flat. At least that's what I'm encouraging myself to maintain this as so that I can really be cognizant and mindful of um, building up too many scrap pieces. And if I see that I have a lot, I want to start using it up more. What I am going to um, attach, even though it's not a gusset per se, it's going to be a little hinge piece. And this I cut to four and a half inches, the same height as my front flap. And it's three and a quarters inches wide. And I just score that in half lengthwise. So at three eighths of an inch. And what this allows is that I can actually use the full width of the um envelope as opposed to losing a little bit of space if I had just glued down the edges of the acetate from the inside. So um, this way I get that full, uh, since this is a four size paper or acetate, it's only eight and a quarter inches wide, but at least with those hinge pieces, I get to access the full width of that now, what I like to do um, is actually stagger my envelope pouches a little bit. So since this doesn't span the full three rings, I've got, um, you know, some pouches that are set to the bottom two rings and then some pouches set to the top two. And that helps to kind of distribute the thickness so that my binder doesn't just bulge 
a lot from one end. And so with um, just re continuing my pattern, this envelope will get set to the bottom two rings in my binder. And so since I do have um, the store-bought envelopes, I'm going to use the holes that are punched in that as a guide for marking where I want to set my uh, holes and my grommets. And if you don't have a template to work off of, you can always just measure the distance between your binder rings and then transfer that measurement to your um, uh, envelope pouch. So I'll go ahead and just um, make a little dot in the center of the holes that um, match with my binder. And I just want to double check that those look like they'll line up and they do. Um, it's always good to kind of double check before you start putting holes into things. So um, that all looks good. And I'm going to bring on my Big Bite, which is another um, gadget. As you can tell, I do like my gadgets. <laughs> so the Big Bite is nice. It's another multifunctional tool. It has um, two different size holes that it can punch and I'll need to start off by punching a hole for each of my grommets and so with this tool you can punch a 1 8 inch hole or a 3 16 inch hole and my grommets are slightly larger than 3 16 of an inch but I find that with this size it's actually um enough to fit through the binder rings just fine and all I have to do is just take a second little um, bite to widen the holes a little bit. But I do like to dry fit my envelope first to see if I need to widen the holes in any particular direction in order to have it slide more smoothly. In this case it seems to be okay so um, as you can see I can't fit my grommet through so I'll go ahead and just um, punch uh, another hole but just mostly like 95% overlapping the first hole. I'm just widening the hole ever so slightly so that I can just fit my grommet through there. And so the difference between grommets and eyelets, at least my understanding is that grommets will have a washer piece on the back side and eyelets do not. So um, this tool, the um, Big Bite, will do both. So it can set grommets or eyelets. You just need to check the manual to make sure that the um, base and the top settings are uh, the requisite ones for whatever size and whatever style of uh, grommet or eyelet that you're um, trying to set. So I just set the, I put the washer in right over the grommet and similar to the button snaps, you want to put the pretty side down and um, have it rest sort of in that cradle that's on the base plate. And then when you squeeze, the top plate will crimp the metal around the washer and that's what keeps um, all of this in place and secured. So this um, is an optional step but when you um, set eyelids or grommets and holes like this it helps to kind of protect that hole and um, even though this is acetate and heavyweight acetate at that which is pretty strong I think that it'll, um, it may have been just fine without this extra step. But I thought since I have these grommets, they're really pretty, I can color coordinate everything. So my um, grommets sort of coordinate with the buttons, which also coordinate with the two um, hinges that I use to close up my envelope on the side. So everything is nicely color coordinated and I can easily tell um, what goes where and what will be inside. Um, so that's how I've been organizing my scraps and so far I'm really loving this system. Um, I think that it's going to help me identify, find what I need, and hopefully use up my scraps more instead of just generating more and more scraps. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I post them, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Thank you so much and until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!